Gargamuni. Yeah, Gargamuni and Brahma Yeah. Like with my laptop, I can like But they started gouging, so Prabhupada told them no. And he, he explained that there's a Vedic standard for profit making. You can't make more than a certain percent. Yeah, it was 25 percent. No, 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 it was like 5 percent. In fact, he explained that Indian businessmen, their profit is, or their, their ras in doing business, hmm. is to have the stock. And they will turn it over even if they just make one or two percent. The inventory. And he said, your Western uh, merchandising where you've got to make hundred percent or more. Yeah. He said, that's, uh, that's not business. That's something else. Yeah. So they keep stock of grain or whatever, or, or cloth, whatever merchandise they, they deal in. Mm. And they'll turn it over even if they make just a, just a, as long as they don't lose anything, they'll, they can, they'll turn it over. Of course, now times have changed, probably. Mm. There was a point when, when uh, <clears throat> I was I was leaving Germany and going to India. With I had like I had a couple small buses. Like was like, it the same seventy six? I for the think, Mariper Festival? I, I, I can't remember the years. I heard that you all did, were stopping and doing Harinam all along the way. But I, I didn't go overland, I flew in, but we also had two big buses, you know, like 40 seaters, a Mercedes and an MAN bus. So before we took off, we stopped in Paris, right? And uh, naturally, like devotees do, they're trying to recruit, <laughs> come on, let's go. <laughs> So the, 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 some of the French devotees, they got, you know, kind of got into that. And then... They actually went? Yeah, they basically <laughs> went in the middle of the night. Right. <laughs> but... Uh, Roll Radha Dhamma tactic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then the, the Bhagavan <laughs> and whoever, they went to Prabhupada and complained bitterly about how to do this stealing my men. So after they left the room, then Prabhupada turned to me. He said, well, if I was a young man, <laughs> and you offered <laughs> for me to go to India. I would also go. <laughs> so, so I said, okay. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> well, that's what I was going. I was going to. I was going to suggest to you that we let's let's start a traveling sankirtan party. <laughs> it sounds great, but I'm a I'm a worn man. I'm a worn out guy. It's mm -hmm. everything it takes to to just make it through the day. We've got we've got a uh, uh, it's an airport shuttle bus. Where do you stay? Um, well, I, I, I was from Massachusetts. No, I mean, where do you? I, I have, like I said, I have a tent. I was tenting oh, in I the see. back in the backyard. I mean, when are you located somewhere on the That's west, what I was, east coast, rather? I was I was from Massachusetts. Yeah. I had a house there that I had inherited from my family, mm -hmm. but my brother took the equity out and our equity loan didn't put it back. And so that, that was the end of that. that was the end of that. <laughs> So now it's I just, take it he's not a devotee. No, he's not. No. <laughs> mm. So well, now it's just me in the open road. Krishna's just making sure that you're going to come back to Godhead, or not. I like to see it like not that. Back to the house. <laughs> yeah, and and that's the thing. It was just like this very comfortable, you know, no, no necessities, very lo lollygagging, you know, just lollygagging. Right. It wasn't. It wasn't good. So this is better. No. Krishna, like I said in the beginning, for every individual devotee, Krishna has scripted and choreographed the way mm -hmm. that will make it possible for him to come. Because not everyone comes, it's not like a standard thing. It's very unique how each, any devotee you talk to, they'll have some story how they came in touch with Krishna. And Prabhupada. So what's your story? Have you told that? My, st my story is, I had a friend, his name was Bob Lefkowitz. And uh, <clears throat> when he got and this initiated... Is, this is in Manhattan? This is 67. Uh, I lived in Hoboken at the time. Okay. I'm that was the... the ha, you are? I live in Hoboken. Which street? Uh, I live on 14th and... Uh, <laughs> I, live on, I live in Shipyard right now. Shipyard oh, I, I, I see. I lived on 2nd Street, right across the street from where they made On the Waterfront. 
Oh yeah. The famous movie. Yeah, I do. I um, I work there every day. We put, we set up movies under the stars. Uh huh. Yeah, we set up a movie on on Pier A. Like well, now day. now, but my apartment in those days was um, across town. No, no, no. It was nineteen dollars and fifty cents. It was a four-room apartment overlooking the whole New York skyline. You know, For twenty bucks. And. After I joined the movement, I used to ever come to New York, and I'd always come to Hoboken just to see, right? Old times. They turned it into condom million dollar condominium. Yeah, I'm paying five thousand a month. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I was paying twenty, nineteen dollars and fifty cents. So it was a spillover from the uh, Lower East Side. Yeah, yeah. When the Lower East Side became a destination point for the yuppie kind of people, then they, 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 they a lot of landlords had a a deliberate program to somehow or other push their tenants out so mm. they could raise the rent. Up, yeah, raise the rent. So I was one of those. I had a, an apartment on 7th Street on Avenue C, a few blocks from the temple at that time. <clears throat> but uh, before I became a devotee, I, I went to Hoboken and spent a couple of years in Hoboken. So, how did Krishna lasso you? Yeah, so, so my story is, once upon a time, once upon a time, <laughs> living in Hoboken, um, I had a friend, Bob Lefkowitz, and when he got initiated, he was one of the first initiated devotees, the, that was 1967, hmm. and his name became uh, Ravinda Swaroop, not the one you yeah. know now, that was the later one. Anyway, we he used to live with me for a short time, but he was a little eccentric, you know. Mm. Not crazy, but, you know, eccentric. So at some point he moved out, and then the next time I saw him again, which was early 67, he came to my place and he, was, he started telling me about the Swami. I should come and meet the Swami. Was he all shaved up with a dodi? No, he wasn't okay. shaved up. He had his hair, and, his, and uh, I think he still had a beard. But he was in touch with, with the Swami up at Mishra's ashram oh. in upstate New York. Mm -hmm. So when he came over to my house and he started telling me about the Swami, right? All, the only image we had of a Swami was from the movies, you know, a guy with a turban and a, a jewel and yeah, a mustache. Yeah, maybe, maybe and, rode on a magic carpet. Yeah, something like that, you know, or he was kind of some sinister character. So he's telling me about the Swami, that the Swami loves everyone, he sings beautifully. And if I go there, he'll give me some hand symbols. Okay, Bob, get real. So, um, but he leaves me a little booklet, Easy Journey to Other Planets, the one that Prabhupada brought from India, kind of a greenish. And you left it in your car. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and I, I didn't read it because, I, first of all, I didn't go to school very much, so it was mm -hmm. difficult for me to read anything. So I just threw it in my car, and but that car broke down on 2nd Avenue and St. Mark's Place, which is six blocks from the temple at that time. So anyway, in, in, within the next, in the next few weeks, my life just started to unravel in different ways, and I was really, you know, losing it, right? And at some point, I got this compulsion, I got to read that little book. So uh, one day I just uh, went over to uh, St. Mark's place to see if my car was still there because I had abandoned it. The tranny fell out or something, something, you know. Mm. And my car is still there, windows are broken, all trashed out. I rum rummaged through the car and the book is there, a little pamphlet. <clears throat> and I start reading it. And every page was like, you know, like, Fourth of July fireworks go, going off for me. It just, just really transforming. Just penetrated my heart and mind and uh, everything. And when I came to the end, I mean, the key point in the book was. So, what, but all the the yog, perfect yogi can go to any planet he likes, because mm. Prabhupada wrote this for the scientists who were going to the moon, right? Mm. And he explained how yogi he can go to any planet, but he said, but. What is the use? Why, why should one bother himself to go to a planet? Because they're all temporary at the time of dissolution. They'll all be d destroyed. But if one comes to the planet of Krishna, that's forever. Yeah. 
And then really, I thought, wow, <laughs> okay, that's for me. Had you been into any kind of mysticism? No, I was into the, the hollow earth and the, the, you know, the planet, that, that's like a whole, supposedly. Admiral Byrd. And yeah, yeah, I, I was into that. Anyway, I, coming, I was not into, into like, uh, Eastern religion or philosophy or anything like that. Right. Just, um, so I, I just walked straight down to Second Street and Second Avenue in mm. the temple and walked in and said, you know, whatever I have to know or, 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 or do, tell me, you know, I want to, like, I want to do this. I want to get into it. And they thought I was some kind of a weirdo because generally people don't do that. <laughs> like totally surrender. Yeah, just walk in. So I spent maybe a couple hours there. I remember one question I asked. I think it was Sutananda. I said, oh, "Did you guys do yoga or anything?" Mm -hmm. "No, nah, we don't have time for that." <laughs> I thought I, I thought this was a spiritual place. <laughs> anyway, so after a couple hours of kind of hanging out there and. and this is the first time you went. It was went. difficult for me to ask questions because I was so kind of puffed up, I guess, and mm -hmm. proud, or, or I just didn't know how to relate, you know, in, mm -hmm. on, on that basis. Anyway, so I just thought, okay, I got my, a bag of beads with the string, a few flyers and a few pamphlets that they had published. Not published, but just mimeographed stuff stapled together. And I'm just getting ready to go out the door, then I remembered the Krishna Krishna thing. How does that go? I asked. I think it was Mahapurush. I said, how does it go, this Krishna Krishna thing that you guys do? So we repeated it about a dozen times. Finally he said, you got it, that's how. I said, okay. And as soon as I walked out the temple, at the top of my lungs, I mean, as if there was a fire. Like, you've seen crazy people that are, you know, talking to somebody that you can't see. And, and he's just a write-off, right? Everybody just like, he's a goner. So when I was doing this chanting, you know, the loud, I, I, after a block or so, I noticed how people people were seeing me like that, <laughs> and it hit me that th this is this is liberated. I'm liberated. I'm 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 not a part of the world anymore. I'm out of it as long as I keep chanting. And then when I got to the car, I said, well, "What about Helena? That was Himavani, right?" I thought, well, okay, I'll go back, get her some beads, and if she goes for good, if not, then I'll just come back to the temple, finish, you know, it was so, it was that complete. First, the first one, one shot. Yeah, like Bob, Bob, he, he didn't know, I guess at the time, how to preach really, or, he, he was just saying things that didn't make any sense to me. Hmm. And one of the things he kept doing, is he'd, he'd ask me to give him a, a glass of water, right? I'd say the water's right there, get it yourself. Because his idea, and later I Getting understood it was serve. to get me to do some service, right? <laughs> I'm saying, well, the water's right there, just take it, you know, why are you asking me for the water? <laughs> so, um, anyway, that's, the, yeah, so I go back and, and I give the, the little pieces of literature we had to him and body, Elena. And she said, no, I don't, I don't want to read anything, because there, there was a wave there in, in, at that time. And you don't read anything, you know, uh, everything yeah. you like. Yeah, yeah. I said, no, just read one page. If after one page it doesn't interest you, I know where, you, I know where you're at. And uh, so she read a little bit, and she said, yeah, I think it's wonderful. I said, great. So here's the beads, and then we started the, stringing the beads, right? In those days, you strung your own beads. and. Uh, I was a smoker at the time. I, I, I didn't have any problem with the beer and the meat and the, all that. But the smoking was like, because I smoked from morning to night, you know. You had the little roll yourself, uh, bugle boy. Bugler. Bugler, right, 10 cents a pack. So I asked my friend, uh, Luke, he lived downstairs, he was a banjo player. He was actually a friend of Dylan's, and I sometimes play with him over in the village. So I said, you know, give me a, 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 a little pot because I'm trying to stop smoking. And he did. And I couldn't stand pot. It made me sick, see, but it was smoke. <laughs> I figured I gotta have something. 
and in four days or so, that was it. I was finished with the smoking. Had you been, had you been into political activism? Because no, there was no. all kinds of you know. I I, I once tried a little people. bit because I was an artist, so I once made a poster for them, a fist up in the air, you know, this kind of. Thing. But I, I went to their office and I saw what lame people they, they were totally spaced out. Lame people, so I didn't want to get into that. I wasn't interested. In that. Mm. I was an artist. I was painting. Oh. You know. And that's how you made, made your living. I didn't make a. I don't know how to. I can't tell you even how I made a living. But somehow or other, nineteen dollars and fifty cents for the rent. Wow. <laughs> you know? So. Yeah, and like a loaf of bread cost a quarter. Kind yeah. Of thing. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And uh, so every day I'd go back to the New York Temple. There's a subway that goes under the, under the river. It's called the Tubes. They call them the Tubes. It goes right to Hoboken. Anyway, and I always was, you know, pushing them that I want to move in. What I didn't know at the time was because I was married, that was like out of the question because I, right. no women, you know, 26 Second Avenue was like no no wider than this temple, yeah. this this table. But they they didn't know how to tell me that, see, because it was such a new thing. <laughs> Finally, after four or five days of me coming back and bugging them, they they, they figured we got to. Uh, find some way to get rid of this guy. He keeps, oh. uh, you know, he keeps coming back here. So they go into a huddle, and one guy comes back, and he says, uh, "You know, we just sent Keith. Keith went to Montreal to start a temple. Would you be willing to go to Montreal?" I said, "Yeah, I was a sailor. I've been all over the world. I have no problem." And so that's what I did. Now, who was we? Was that that was Brahmananda Gargamuni? Brahmananda Gargamuni wasn't there yet. And Mahapurush was one of their guys, uh, Satsarup, but I didn't see him that I can remember, or Rupanuga. Chutananda? At Chutananda, I remember. The second day I came, <coughs> I brought him a body, and we went upstairs to Prabhupada's little apartment in the back. Uh -huh, you know? uh -huh. And uh, after spending a few hours there, with Srila Prabhupada. No, Prabhupada wasn't there. He, he had gone to San Francisco just er, a little bit earlier. Oh. I came in March of 67, beginning of March. I think it was Lord Chaitanya's appearance day because the, the third day I came, they all huddled around a, an old tape recorder. Well, you know, a tape recorder, that was a big thing in those days still, but it was a big... <laughs> and they... Uh, we're sending a little message to Prabhupada. <coughs> to oh, Prabhupada. right, yeah, yeah, yeah. On, uh, on a tape, and they would send yeah, a tape. Yeah, right. So they asked me also to say something, which I did. But uh, anyway, uh, where were we? <laughs> well, you, no, you... Yeah, no. I, so leaving the second day, I brought him a body, or Helena. And just when we were, had been there a few hours, we decided to go back. I'm walking out of Prabhupada's, the Swami's apartment, and just before you go out the door to your right, there's like an alcove, and that was the kitchen. And Chudananda, he was a kind of a short guy, Charles Barnett. He, you know, he was a flute player for uh, Richie Havens. Oh, you know. Yeah, he was a musical, <laughs> he was wow. a little guy. So I'm, I'm seeing him, and he's trying to clean the stove. So I said, uh, I stopped. I said, you know, you got to take the top off. You're going to clean the stove. You can't clean it unless you take the top off. So that was a Navy cook, you know, ship's cook. So he says, well, it, it, well how, how, why don't you do this if you know how to do it so well? I said, sure. So we, me and him, body, we spent the next couple of hours just cleaning that kitchen from top to bottom because it was really kind of grungy, you know. And that was my first service. So, and then uh, I didn't have a car, but I had a friend who had a car on Avenue C. Hmm. You know where Avenue C is? No. Well, it's in the, you know, the extreme Lower East Side. <laughs> really, really, uh, you know, heavy place. A lot hmm. of Puerto Rican and, you know, people. Poor people, real poor. He had an office there. He was a lawyer, and he was a do-good lawyer helping the hippies keep their apartment, rent control, all that kind of thing. Big guy, 300 pounds. 
I come in, I said, Floyd, I gotta, I need your car. I said, really, what? what do you mean you need my car? I need my car for work. I said, no, this is different. This is for Krishna. He said, I don't care who it's for. I'm not giving you my car. So I sat with him for about an hour and a half or two hours. And by the, and at the end of that, I got the keys to the car. <laughs> Can you, can you say more, can you say more about that? I mean, how that how that happened? Well, Cause was, I, I I was just I, for some I don't know if this happens to everyone that becomes a devotee, but for me everything it was like I'd yeah. always been a devotee. It all fell into place. We can use everything for Krishna: car, TVs, money, whatever it is. We got you know, and I was right into getting it all. Uh -huh. So that's I came with that attitude to his office. Yeah. Anyway, he gave me the keys, but that car got stuck just a week earlier up in Connecticut in the snow, right? Wouldn't start, but he gave me the keys. He said, if you, if, if you can get it, it's yours. You can take it. So I had a friend, Archie Dukshire. He lived in the building that Prabhupada was in, and, and the car got stuck at his place or a friend of his, oh. that you know, where they hung out and did their, whatever they do, you know, their sense gratificatory <laughs> romps. So Archie, uh, he, I, I convinced him to drive me up there and get the car. And he said, but the car doesn't, it won't, won't start. I said, it's gonna start because it's for Krishna. <laughs> and all the way driving, it took about an hour and a half or so to get up there. I'm preaching to Archie how you got to, you know, become a devotee. This is the highest thing. This is the, we're not the body and so forth. And he keeps saying, yeah, yeah, I know it's the highest thing, but I got one more thing that I got to do. He wanted to open a bar for like, you know, eccentric bar out people down in Florida because he was from, from Florida. I said, no, Archie, that's what Maya is, to think that you got some other thing to do or one more thing to do before you join. You got to join now, otherwise, you know, you, you'll the garden gate may close. <laughs> right. And the fact is that he he didn't join, and a year later he opened his bar, but he, he drowned. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. So he was a very nice guy. I really liked him. So, uh, but then when we anyway getting back to the car, we drive up to Connecticut. The car is sitting on the, you know a couple feet of snow. And I said to Archie, uh, okay. Okay, all right. <laughs> so I'm uh, still trying to convince him. So I said, Archie, now you know that this car wouldn't start when we last were here. But because Krishna wants me to have this car, I'm going to shovel away the snow, get in, it's going to start right up. I thought that would impress him, right? And sure enough, I did that, and it started right up. <laughs> but he's still not convinced. Then the other thing I did was that I said, Archie, because, you know, I'm going to take a hit of LSD. In fact, I'm going to take two hits of LSD, and nothing's going to happen to me because I don't have any more junk in my brain. I'm just, mm -hmm. a, you know, Krishna. And um, and I did, and nothing happened except I couldn't sleep all night, <laughs> you know. But uh, Archie never became a devotee. Anyway, I got the car, and then the next maybe it, maybe it wasn't very good acid. Uh, that that could be true too. I don't know, you know. But at any rate, I, w I was not a, a dope guy. I didn't get into that. In fact, Archie was the guy who originally convinced me I should take it, but uh, hmm. I, I resisted for the longest time. I was terrified about drugs. Hmm. So, anyway, a day or two later, after we got the car down, we, uh, we drove to Montreal. And uh, before I left, they shunted Jodorani off on me because, they, you know, they were all brahmacharis. And they, she lived in the Bronx and she was always coming down, so it was awkward for them. And they asked me, uh, you know, would I take her? I said, yeah, sure, why not? She's in Alachua now, in the uh, um, Narayan Maharaj camp. Oh, in Alachua, uh -huh. and she's doing really nice. She has her own little ashram. Uh -huh. She has all these Brahmacharinis that she preaches to and cultivates, uh -huh. like that. Doing, selling her paintings, doing her paintings. She's and working on her book. 
she's yeah. working on her biography book. Mm -hmm. But she's got a whole little, she's like kind of revered there. So she has a second floor apartment at the, <laughs> at the ashram and all her yeah, yeah. trainees. Yeah, so the, but the funny thing happened at the, uh, hey, Baba. Hey, Baba. <laughs> where, where are you going? Hare Nam. Hare Nam, where? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Huh? Berkeley. Berkeley. Yeah. On Telegraph? Yeah. Oh, okay. After yeah, I finish, maybe I'll walk up that way and okay. and hear your vibrations. Ha <laughs> ha! The Krishna, Papa, by the way. Yeah. He bought the Lord. Lord. So you took Jadarani to Montreal with you? Yeah. So when we got to the border, <laughs> she turns out she didn't have a passport. How can someone not have a passport? <laughs> you know. I was 26 years old in those days, and I spent, you know, three, three and a half years in the Navy. So, you know, I couldn't imagine that anyone would not have a passport when he's going to go to another country. But in those days, it wasn't such a, a rigid thing. So that it, we wound up at uh, the temple. And the, they, they let you and her go? She yeah, yeah. Enter. yeah. Kirtananda, he was there, Kirtananda. And I, I, I think, I think I'd seen a film, uh, like an eight millimeter film clip of him, Kirtananda, when I was in 26 second half, before I left there, you know, the first year there. And he was kind of, uh, kind of a scary looking guy. <laughs> he had a couple of teeth missing, he was unshaven. But anyway, that was my first. <laughs> well, like Kirtananda said in a, a couple of days after we were up in Madre, he said, I'm going to teach Helena how to cook. I said, no, you got to teach me how to cook. Because I was a Navy cook, you know. And, uh, and I, I had seen someone in New York making chapatis. And I asked him, how, 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 did, how, did you, how did you do that? How do you get it to puff up? He said, well, it just does, you know. I said, no, what do you put in the dough? He said, just water. I said, no, you got to be putting something in the dough to make it rise, right? He said, no, it's just water and flour. I said, I don't believe it. How does it pop up? He said, well, it's, it's Krishna's arrangement. <laughs> So uh, anyway, that's why I wanted to learn how to cook. So, but Kirtananda, he wanted to teach her. I said, if you don't teach me to cook, I'm leaving. <laughs> of course, I wouldn't have left. I just said that. Kirtananda, and so that was a uh, march towards you know middle or end of March, and uh, Prabhupada had just gone. Maybe a month. I can't. I can't remember how long before I came, but not much. He went to San Francisco. <coughs> so uh, I got initiated. And then so March I came. March and May 11th I got initiated. We, we drove down to New York, and it, I think at the beginning of June, Prabhupada had that heart attack, and so Kirtananda left Montreal to assist, you know, accompany Prabhupada to uh, India. So I was in charge of the temple. Up in Montreal? Yeah, and I loved it. I thought it was terrific. But you didn't, you, you didn't have any impulse to go and see Srila Prabhupada? No, because, you know, I actually, when I read that little book, hmm. Easy Journey, I was so completely uh, I used to say transformed and convinced. I didn't even know that there was a person, you know, that yeah. there was a person like Prabhupada. I, I just, I just the, the content of the book hmm. completely transformed me. Wow. And even when I learned, kind of, I had no like, you know, I noticed that some some of the devotees they were like groupies, you know, like like the, you do for rock stars, you know, you want to be with them. But I didn't have that at, at the beginning, because the, the the text, the content, the philosophy was so uh, it was so com it was so substantial for me. Yeah. And um, anyway, 
So when Prabhupada got the heart attack, Kirtananda was with him. But uh, I did very, in short order, come to the conclusion, I always have to do something hmm. so I can write the Swami a letter. Because, uh, you know, having spent four years in the Navy, I didn't want to be under somebody who wasn't the ultimate guy. Right. <laughs> because I saw the devotees were kind of spaced out. Right. You know, they, they of course, were devotees, but when it came to doing practical things, uh, they were somehow or other very chaotic. Yeah. And, and this was one of the first problems that in my Krishna consciousness. I, th I would become irritated because people will lose your stuff or forget your stuff or break your stuff or don't come on time and, and you know, all these kind of things. And it would really irritate me. And, and I didn't know how to deal with it because I was thinking, oh, I'm, I'm so materialistic, I just can't, you know, I want to. But then I learned uh, quickly <laughs> that no, that's not the way it is. You do everything, you know, as, as systematic and intelligent and uh, careful. Because for Krishna, it's not like spiritual life. The spiritual thing is just, you know, a vague, uh, hazy affair. No. One another thing that I wonder about is what was what was going on here. It was what was it seventy eight or something like that. And this whole thing. I don't know if you don't want to get into it. But this whole thing about the, the guns and everything like that. What here, guns? Oh no, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to get into that because everybody takes these stories. There are tons of stories floating around about these things. And add and subtract, and they just get so mm. bent out of shape. It's, you know. Yeah. It's quagmire. A quagmire, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it, it, you know this this somehow or other this area, the Bay Area, has got a special mystique. Uh, you know, from the whole 60s era, yeah. and then Krishna consciousness kind of springing out of it. That, yeah, I, uh, you know, I opened the Berkeley Temple, right? You know that, right? No. Can you, yeah, can you tell me about that? Well, you know, after, anyway, Prabhupada went to India when he had the heart attack. Kids were not known with him, and so yes. I was in charge of that temple. And uh, I would, like I, I was telling you, I was so, how do you say, intoxicated and, right. and, and, and energized by this little book, Easy Journey of the Planet. After Kirtananda left, I, <laughs> I started thinking that I could, I, that other people should read this book because if someone reads it like I read it, the same thing's going to happen to them because right. it was so well, substantial. Yeah, I heard you talk about you can, the whole world will get turned yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I decided to uh, print it, and in those days uh, it was the mimeograph. Right. So, so I, I bought a mimeograph machine, paper and stencils, and got somebody to do the typing. Got Baradraj to do a, a cover stencil, you know, picture of like on the Bhagavatam and cover. And this, this was when you were still in Montreal? Yeah. Okay. Probably 1968, I'd say. And, and Baradraj would have been in New York? No, no, no. He he joined in in Montreal. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's another story. There, there was a, a there was a like a frat house around the corner from the temple. It was full of these young kids. Yeah. Prabhupada always uh, explained to us that this unnecessary industry and uh, yeah, karma. Yeah, Uber Karma. There's a there's a devo there's a devotee in uh, Tal in New Taliban in Mississippi, who has started. A, he's got a website called the Second Half. He's calling it the Second Half. The Second Half of the movement. It's fifty percent. Oh. Uh, Punj. Oh, I know Tapapunj. Yeah. yeah so, and he's in Taliban now. He's planning to move to Alachua. I see. He's got five acres. He's going to yeah, work yeah, with yeah. here. I know. But he's got a website. And he's talking about this yeah. very thing. I've, I've talked to him about this same thing. Oh. In fact. I explained this. the same thing I'm explaining to you, I explained to him, and I, I know that he understands it. There has to be an environment where people can uh, practice Krishna consciousness in every way. Somebody's a carpenter, someone's an electric, somebody's a mechanic, somebody is just a family man, he's growing, uh, agri producing agriculture. Hmm. 
And there is, uh, already is a direction in the young people of this, these years, like the 60s, they wanted an alternative to what they were inheriting from their parents. They didn't want to follow that same path. So they're the people who joined Prabhupada. The philosophy just... Hare <laughs> Krishna. And similarly, there are young people today who see, you know, the evils of uh, industry mm. and um, this new digital uh, technology mm. is just consuming people for nothing. And they, they're thinking of taking to that alternative where they go on the land, but they think that that is the end goal. It's not. It's simply a platform which is more practical and realistic for <clears throat> pursuing the real goal, which is to get out of the cycle of birth and death, go back to Godhead. Yeah. There's a lot of people who, are, who have farms, and they're like, uh, there's, one, there's one in K uh, Kentucky, there's one uh, on, on north of uh, Den uh, Detroit. There's yeah, a lot the, of there's one up in uh, Washington, on the border of Washington, uh, Anutama and Billy. Yeah. And uh, Ishan, the guy who put the, the devotee who put the drum, the, the Balaram drum together, okay. he's in New Mexico. Ah. But now one thing I've noticed, all, all these people, they are alone. They don't, they, they don't have sufficient manpower and association. And, they, there's and, one, and, and, and that has to be addressed. Yeah, there's one devotee in, uh, in Detroit. He's got he's got uh, a house and with a beautiful garden, and he's got a couple of pieces of land. You know, just like because there's all these lots, you know, that are just torn down houses, and so there's empty lots everywhere. So he's purchased a couple of these together lots. You know, he's got a big garden with a. It's called Bloom uh, du, Bloom du, uh, Detroit to Bloom or something like that. Really? Yeah. But in doing, in the city. It, right in the city, and it's ne right next, just a block or two from the temple, from wow. the Fisher Mansion. You know, but he's doing it all by himself and his family, and he's got some some kind of volunteers who help. But he's doing that's that's his thing, you know. He's growing flowers, and he sells the flowers. I see. But he, he's been making his living doing that for the last uh, thirty years, something. Yeah. Like that. See, this 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 is the next wave. Because these temples are not going to be filled up again like they were when Prabhupada was here, young. It's a different know. era. It's a different, whole different. Well, it, 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 yes, you know, in time everything transforms from one thing to another. But mm. so, but there is a necessity, and Prabhupada articulated it mm -hmm. in Vrindavan before he left his body. Mm -hmm. And so, those older. Mm. To integrate with the existing, how do you say, uh, uh, atmosphere mm. in the temples or in ISKCON or where they should should be engaged to to give advice mm. when when even in the karmis when uh, someone retires from a big business mm -hmm. they consult him he becomes a consultant mm -hmm. he gives advice. Yeah. The trouble the trouble that there's the devote devotees have had. Like there's one community I'm thinking of in particular that um, they they can't see eye to eye. There's somehow somehow there's this uh, di di dissension that happens in the midst of. Well, I, I don't know the details, but one of the things about uh, you know that kind of rural commun communal living is proprietorship turns sand to gold. Mm. That someone who has the wherewithal to purchase land, he. He uh, has to be able to harmonize with people, mm. to cooperate on the basis of Prabhupada's teachings. I was maybe that, maybe that's the point. You see. Maybe 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 next time we could get together with Maduha because I'm thinking of Maduha's and his Prabhupada village in Sandy Ridge, North Carolina, that the Festival of India is based out of. They get he bought a bunch of land and he sold sold it and they built a temple like that. But for some reason, there's there, it's not growing and devotees are leaving, and the houses that they did build are being purchased by karmis. Oh, you know, somehow or other, there's this there's you know just some kind of spirit that kind of has gone out the window with, because it, you know it, he, 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 did, he quotes that you know turns. everything comes back to the root mm. the root of a tree mm. is the most important part yes or no yes watering the, the top roots. side is possible only because there's a root 
But if the root is separated from the trunk and the branches, the leaves, the flowers, and the fruits, yeah. what happens? Well, he's he's all he's all into Prabhupada's books, you know, Prabhupada's original books, you know, purchasing them, you know, yeah. even in defiance of you know the BBT or whatever the politics are, you know, right. he he buys them and you know sells them to people who only want Prabhupada's original books. Right, right. You know? So even with that kind of you know str uh, strong foundation, you know, even again still there's these devotees who are leaving for you know they can't co uh, again you know it'd, it'd be good to like sit down with him and you know get his perspective on what it is that's going wrong, you know. But it, it's all there, you know, the like worship of the Panchatattva, you know, they got deities, you know, deities of Panchatattva deities or Gornitai deities, and they got pujaris and very nice prasadam, and you know, they, they used to have a school, but now that's finished, you know. So it's, for some reason, it was just. Uh, well, it always a, comes back to that. It's as so simple as that. I mean, in a small way, because I was married, and we did this. I mean, in fact, Lakshmi, she still takes care of cows. We're supplying milk here, we're supplying milk to uh, L.A. But it required, for one person to maintain, it's very difficult. You need a communal cooperative environment yeah. where they help one another. He was telling me that they, that he, he was on the board, then he retired from the board. They, they The board, when he was away, because he travels with the Festival of India, when he was away, the board uh, chose to adopt some kind of policy where the where uh, it's some kind of interpretation of it's, it's this thing to do with the G, GBC or something like that, where um, then be, be, uh, he, he would have to explain. You know, it, just, institutionalization yeah. is a killer. Yeah, it kills the whole thing. Yeah, it's this it's this love and trust. That's what the thing was based yeah. on. And that's what we got from Shiro Paul. That's what I'm getting from you. Yeah, if if, if I own a property, right? Mm. And you come to me, if I can get on with you and inspire you and give you a facility to meet your demands, you might need some place to live, some income, then that's the basis of communal living. It's not a, we just have formal meetings and pass resolutions, that doesn't work. Yeah. It got to be that there were some devotees who liked what uh, Tripurari Swami was doing or some Narayan thing, you no. know. Yeah. There has to be, in every situation, there has to be a leader. Hmm. Even amongst the chickens and, and the horses, and the, they have a hierarchy, right? Yeah. Or they yeah. call it pecking order. Yeah. Yeah. The military, they call it the, the command, you know. Chain of command. Chain of command. We yeah. call it Guru Parampara. Hmm. Yeah. So, <clears throat> in the... In, in the sense that it's, it operates in the military, it's supposed to operate for ISKCON. Prabhupada is the commander-in-chief. Then he has field marshals, we can call them GBCs, and Ritviks, or whatever you want to call them, like recruiting, they recruit new blood. Yeah. We need new soldiers, we can't use the, the old soldiers, are tired. Have you heard about these new temples that are coming up? They're, Prabh they're, they're Prabhupada temples, but they're not ISKCON? And there's one in heard. Edison, New Jersey, and there's there's one in Santa Cruz, California, uh -huh. where they're where they're uh, worshiping Sri Prabhupada. They have Radha Krishna deities. They're using Prabhupada's original books, but it's not part of this Oh, okay, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when when by I don't know, you know by I know the name. But I okay, by Kuntanath. He's an old devotee. I met him in devotee in New York years and years ago, but he told me this little story that. Uh, he had a burning question which he wanted to pose <coughs> to Prabhupada, but he was kind of shy. Mm. So at one point he was alone with Prabhupada in India in Radha Damodar, and he felt, oh, now's the time I can ask this question. Mm -hmm. So his question was... Radha Damodar uh, Temple. Yeah. The, yeah the, his question was, Prabhupada, we're distributing hundreds and thousands and millions of books. But how will these people be initiated in the future? Mm. And Prabhupada's response was very simple. He said, one who reads my books is initiated. Wow. And he gave an analogy to illustrate that point. He said, when a boy and girl 
meet and they fall in love and become attached to one another? He said, that's marriage. The formal ceremony, it's a, it's a formality which is conducted in order to keep kind of civil order in, in a society. But the actual marriage takes place when, when they become, how do you say? Intimate. Intimate or attached. Yeah. So just by reading so, Prabhupada's books, that yeah, is that's yeah, that's how I became a devotee. I, I, no one preached to me. No one tried to like <laughs> you know convince me of anything or talk to me about no, nothing. Uh, in fact, the guy gave me the book. I didn't read it for right. a couple months. It just lay lay there. When I finally had the impulse.